All right, it's a moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to dig into these macro controls and see what they can do. Now, I've reverted back to this A panel view because I want to just do a brief review of what we have here. You'll recall this maybe as a foggy and uh, vague memory from our early forays into uh, Scanner. The macro controls are here on the right side of the A panel. And they are essentially Uber controls. They are controls that are assignable to either three or two destinations, depending on which one we're talking about. And when we get into the B panel, we have access to those destinations. But in the A panel, we only have the intensity of the macro control. Right? So if I play a note, and I begin to crank that, I can kind of hear the effect. But I can't, I can't really tell what it's changing, right? And that goes for all of these, whether it's source, variation, filter, space. We know that they're doing something. We don't exactly know what they're doing. We know how, you know, how intense their effect is, but we don't know what they're controlling. But one thing we do know from the A panel is that these can be modulated by an LFO, uh, by this global LFO here. And if we click this on-off switch underneath each one of these on, we'll see that it begins to register the LFO modulation from the global LFO. And you can hear that, and as I raise the rate, you both hear and see that that modulation taking place. Now, this bears emphasis. This global LFO really only functions with the macro controls. right? It works to modulate the macro control intensity and if I switch over to the B panel, I see this other LFO that is uh, a completely different LFO. It's the polyphonic LFO. And so just think of the global LFO as, as connected to these macro controls and you'll be fine. But let's move into the B panel. I'm going to reset this snapshot just so we're starting from scratch. As I move into the B panel, we see these familiar macro controls, but there's additional information. And, and uh, as a side note, you do have to have this set to macro controls here at the bottom. You could switch this back and forth. You may be set to modulators. Just switch it over to macro controls if it's set to modulators. So for this snapshot, which is uh, snapshot bank one, snapshot seven, it's twin retro. We come down here to source, and we see that we have these drop downs. And each one of these drop downs is a different destination for this macro control. Now you'll see that, that in the case of source and variation, we have three destinations. In the case of filter and space, we have two. Uh, and uh, just to review what we said uh, in a prior video, that source and variation really pertain to the larger alterations in the sound, the kind of more drastic changes. And filter and space intrinsically are uh, more subtle because they pertain to the effects, to the eight pole filter and to the uh, echo and reverb units. But let's move back to source. Now, in the A panel view, we just saw source as the single control. We could change it. We could, we could hear its effect, but we couldn't really see what it was doing. Now, if we go into the B panel, and you'll see that the source knob is now kept up with the, source, uh, with the movement that I made in the A panel view. When I move this, if you look closely, you'll see various parameters moving. And, and those are the things that are selected here. Now, each one of these dropdowns is a, is a macro destination. Now, these aren't, this isn't modulation that's happening. This is just control. You're just controlling a number of things simultaneously with these macro controls. And in the first instance, you're controlling the position of oscillator A, right? And in the second, you're controlling the waveform of oscillator A. And in the third, you're, you're controlling the fine position slider, which is this one you'll recall from an earlier tutorial. Now underneath these are the range, uh, the positive and negative mo uh, control. I keep wanting to say modulation, I have to keep, my, keep myself from doing that. So you'll see that this is uh, positive control with the red to the right, and you click and drag on this to establish the level of, uh, the, the level of uh, movement and if you drag it to the left, you get negative. But let's just uh, revert back to our original snapshot and use these original values. So if I play a note, and if I play a note and I drag this up, you'll keep an eye on oscillator A and you'll see it move. 
and you hear a, a fairly drastic change in the sound. Now I can also pull this negative so that when I crank up when I crank up this source knob, oscillator A actually moves negatively. Right? So if I crank this, if I crank source, see that oscillator A moves down to zero. Now if I move that, if I move source back to a zero position, oscillator A begins to rise. It's an inverse relationship. But of course, this all depends on where oscillator starts off, right? So you can set oscill the, the, the destination uh, control to whatever you like. Wow, that was a little harsh. And, um, and then move from there. Now the other two, oscillator A wave and position fine, are a little more subtle. In the case of oscillator A wave, it's subtle because you can't actually see it from this view. It's only when I switch over to modulators that you'll see what it's doing, and, and of course I can't mo I can't move the source knob when I'm when I'm simultaneously on a different panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to modulate, courtesy of the LFO. Turn this down a bit. So the global LFO is now modulating source. This is what we hear this nice movement, and if I move over to modulators, we'll see that oscillator A, the wave selector, is being uh, is being controlled by the LFO modulation of the source knob, right? So it's moving between a sine wave into this kind of intermediate zone between the triangle and ramp up wave. So it's really a, a very interesting concept in the sense that you have all of these different destinations for these macro controls, and not only can you control them, but you can modulate the macro control itself so it is it is really like having three separate pans on the uh, controls tweaking them at the same time now here's another really interesting one and you'll see if you read the documentation you'll see that each that source and variation and filter and space all have different possible destinations when you click on these drop downs and you look at them you'll see that they differ slightly from uh, from control to control based on what they're designed to control but if I move this, this this position fine, this fine position destination is set to a very low level, so we can't really see it doing anything. If I crank this up, what you're going to see is that it makes a difference when I move the source knob. And again, we're, we're looking up here to this fine position slider. And if I want, I can create a larger range for the fine position to work in. And then if you start modulating with the LFO, so really these are not, uh, each one of these destinations is, is full of possibilities. I know I say that a lot, oh it's full of possibilities, it's full of possibilities, but this one really is, I mean they're, the, the, the destinations that you can assign these controls to are really out there. Variation is somewhat different because now you're talking about the uh, most of these are in the polyphonic processing unit, or some of them at least, and um, oscillator A course control for example. modulate that with the LFO and you switch back over, you'll see that uh, it's it's modulating the course control of the pitch. I, I misspoke earlier when I said it's a polyphonic processing unit. We're really talking about various destinations here and there is this uh, these two mixers at the bottom pertain to the polyphonic processing unit, but most of these others are throughout the interface. So, but, but note that, that you do have different options here. See, these are position of oscillator A, position of oscillator B, and these are uh, coarse control of oscillator A, fine control of oscillator A. So they look similar, but in fact these will give you very different results, and there's so many different permutations that you can use here that, that you can uh, start off with some of these snapshots and then start to tweak the modulations. Frequently they'll have modulations dialed in for these macro controls, or at least they'll have destinations for the macro controls that you can use as a starting point and then kind of tweak and find sounds and textures that you like. Now in the case of filter and space as we mentioned before these these 
are really related to the effects. And so if I say, for example, modulate the filter macro with uh, the global LFO, you see that one of the destinations is balance here. And this is the balance on the eight pole filter between the low and high pass filters. Gives you kind of an opening and closing sound. Now this center control, which we discussed before, th this establishes the kind of average uh, center point for the eight pole filter. Again, this isn't set to do re really any intensity of control. If I drag this over, however, And you'll get all these strange interference effects when you, st you start to set these things up. Mix. That's another one you can use. Now, the other thing that's interesting to do is to use this uh, space. Echo is, as we mentioned, is a really neat uh, delay unit. Time is something that can be very fruitful to change with a macro control and to modulate. Now in this case we have the reverb size receiving much more control from the macro controls than echo time is, but so we crank this echo time. You get this weird kind of retro vinyl effect. That's a little spooky, isn't it? But that's that's really it for the macro control. So, you know, it's a little mind-blowing when you think about the, the different levels that you're working at. You're starting with uh, a control on the A panel. I mean, you can control it only on the A panel if you like. If you dial in your, your uh, control destinations, you can just revert to the A panel and control it as you like. And then, of course you can modulate using the global LFO. And to increase the rate on that LFO and to change the shape, you use these, right? So those are also at your disposal. But the macro controls are a really interesting way of looking at moving the sound by recourse to specific parameters that are moving in concert with one another. Um, it really does kind of blow up this whole ensemble, and I encourage you to explore with it. I think that, the, as I said before, the best thing to do is just to start with a snapshot that you like and see what kinds of macro control destinations they have dialed in, see if they have any modulation, and then just start tweaking and start experimenting. Get your hands uh, dirty and... Uh, you know, really get a sense for how this can change how you're moving through the sample.